Hi, I'm Kirby Allison, and in today's video, I am going to shine uh, my pair of Carmina replica Russian reindeer chukka boots. As you can see, uh, these need a little bit of work, and so we're gonna give these boots some attention today. Today we're going to shine a pair of oiled leather boots. Uh, so this is a really interesting material that we did as part of a collaboration with Carmina. It is the uh, replica Russian reindeer uh, made by Baker's Tannery in the United Kingdom. The boot was made by Carmina. Of course, we have filmed extensive videos with Carmina, uh, including a factory tour uh, of their factory in Mallorca uh, and visiting their boutique uh, in New York City, uh, as well as a lot of different reviews of their shoes. Uh, this Chukka boot, uh, as you can see, is really a weekend warrior for me. Uh, this boot, it gets an exceptional amount of use. Uh, it is an incredible boot. I love the hatch grain of the replica Russian reindeer. Uh, it pairs perfectly with a pair of jeans, even uh, a pair of cavalry twill uh, trousers I have. Uh, and uh, this is a weekend warrior boot for me. I wear with the kids. Uh, and as you can see, I mean, it has gotten uh, really beat up. Uh, and neglected, I'm certainly guilty of not really giving uh, this shoe the proper attention and care that it deserves. But uh, rest assured here at KirbyAllison.com, we have the largest collection of luxury shoe care products available anywhere in the world, and that includes products to care for your oiled leather shoes. Now, oiled leather is different than a traditional a tanned calf skin uh, in that the uh, leather is stuffed with oils, uh, and that is what gives it the unique soft finish. Uh, and so you really want to use special products on a pair of oiled leather shoes. Uh, Chrome XL is another example of an oiled leather, uh, because if you use traditional calfskin products like the Saphir Pomodier Cream Polish or the Saphir Pat Deluxe Wax Polish, uh, you end up putting too uh, many waxes uh, on the leather and you will change the texture of the leather itself. Uh, oiled leather uh, really, uh, as you can see, is meant to have a soft finish. Uh, and in order to properly nourish uh, and care for the oiled leather, you need to be filling it uh, or conditioning it with something that has those oils uh, that are similar uh, to the oils in which this leather was tanned. Fail safe ways to determine whether or not your leather is oiled leather is to simply take your thumb and press it on the leather. If whenever you do that, uh, the leather lightens uh, in color, uh, that means that it is oiled uh, because that pressure is kind of pushing that oil uh, out of that particular uh, part of the leather. Uh, now these boots probably need a little bit more work uh, than uh, is gonna be covered in the scope of this video, uh, but let's talk about what we are going to do. Uh, now, uh, these boots really could stand uh, to have some leather cleaning soap, uh, just to shampoo it to remove anything that is on top of that leather uh, off. Uh, but the focus of this uh, video Video really is to showcase the Saphir and Modality or uh, oiled leather cream. Uh, so this is a new product. Uh, Saphir has a, uh, a greasy leather cream that comes in a plastic bottle, uh, but this is a new creation uh, that they have just recently it uses apricot oil and some Neats foot oil and some other uh, oils to uh, really uh, replicate uh, the same type of oils that are used in the tanning process of a Chrome XL or an oiled leather. Uh, that is going to nourish and hydrate the leather. Uh, and this also has uh, pigments. It's got more pigments uh, than the greasy leather cream, and that is going to provide that restoration and recoloring. So as you can see, uh, these boots, uh, just through their use, have quite a bit of scuffing and discoloration. Uh, and if you were to just use, uh, let's say, a neutral uh, oiled leather cream on this, uh, you wouldn't uh, restore uh, that uh, finish. So I'm going to run outside real quick and uh, give these a quick shampoo uh, with the leather cleaning soap. Uh, so we're going to take a break, and I'll be back in one second. So here we are, uh, the boots are back. I've cleaned them with the leather cleaning soap, uh, which is a gentle cleaner uh, that is just gonna take all of the dirt and grime kind of off of this shoe. So it's not gonna pull uh, any of the hard waxes off. You really need to use the Saphir Reno mat for that. Uh, and it's not uh, going to um, overly dry these shoes, uh, which is good as well, uh, but it is uh, going to provide kind of a total kind of gentle cleaning. And the uh, Saphir leather cleaning soap is perfect for that. And the one thing to keep in mind is you do need to allow the leather to fully dry before you come back and polish on top of that. So we had to set these boots outside for a few hours, of course, not in the direct sunlight uh, to allow them to dry, uh, but now they are ready uh, to be shined up. So 
As I said, you know, for that we have the Saphir uh, oiled leather cream. Uh, this is the new Medal d'Or uh, version, which is higher quality. It has that apricot oil, the neat's foot oil, and other items that are going to help uh, really uh, restore the oils in this oiled leather. Very important. And then it also has pigment, which is going to help us recolor and fix some of this scuffing. Uh, great product. Uh, you can see it right here. Uh, you can really even smell uh, the apricot in it. it. Sounds odd, but it's true. Uh, and so to apply this, I'm going to use a cotton chamois. Um, this is one of our Wellington cotton chamois. Uh, eight and a half ounces, high quality kind of cotton twill. Uh, and this is, uh, you know, less of a science, right, uh, with the oiled leather cream because it is relatively thin uh, than with the pomander cream polish. And so I'm gonna put it on my chamois uh, and then really just work it uh, into the leather. Now this pigment is quite transparent, uh, and so you don't really have to worry about totally changing the finish of the boots. So it goes on a little bit dark in this case, but again, once I get it onto the leather, uh, it's going to lighten up quite significantly. So I'm gonna apply this. And again, as I said, these boots have been, you know, pretty well abused. So I'm gonna actually put a pretty generous coat on there. I'm gonna get a little bit onto the welt uh, but honestly, I will probably spend a little bit of extra time uh, on the edges uh, and heels here after uh, this video. Uh, they're quite rough. I'll probably sand them down uh, and then uh, use some of the Pomadeur Cream Polish uh, and Saphir Mirror Gloss to, uh, to refinish those. So we have an entire video on the channel on advanced edge and heel care. It's the final frontier, uh, in my opinion. You can spend a lot of time conditioning your shoes and shining them. Uh, but if you don't take care of the edges and heels at the end of all that, uh, you know, it still just will lack that degree of finish. So edges and heels, very important, not difficult. All you really need is a little bit of pomander cream polish. Uh, and then the Saphir Mirror Gloss, because of its high concentration of hard waxes, uh, is really a fantastic product for edge and heel care. Okay. I'm going to continue to work this in. So the greasy leather cream uh, or the oiled leather cream, the Medal d'Or, has very, very light waxes in it. It's not going to provide a high shine surface um, like the Pomadeur Cream Polish would. Uh, there are a few waxes in there, but it's, it's very light. Uh, uh, and so, again, uh, we'll buff it. You know, once this has an opportunity to dry, uh, buffing it should bring up a little bit more of a shine uh, out of this, but you're gonna see that it's not going to be shiny like a pair of calfskin shoes. Uh, and that's really what you want, again, with oiled leather, uh, is that um, it has a nice kind of soft finish. It's not meant to be a dress boot. And then you can see this is darkening a little bit right here. Uh, I expect that that color to rebound after the leather has time to absorb all these oils and dry. Now, any type of oiled product will always darken leather whenever you apply that, just because it does such a great job saturating uh, the leather itself. And so you'll see initial darkening, uh, but then you should find that the color rebounds after a few days as the leather has had time to dry. So don't be too alarmed. If you're really concerned about darkening your shoes, uh, Saphir does make uh, this in a neutral, uh, and so that uh, would condition the leather, right? It would restore those natural oils, uh, and you wouldn't have to worry about uh, any type of uh, impact from the pigment. Uh, you would still find that it darkens the leather a little bit, uh, and we may illustrate that uh, here in a second. Uh, okay, so that's on there. Again, really kind of working this into the leather, because I, what I want here is conditioning. It does have a pronounced hatch grain. So for instance, you can see, you know, there is a little bit of buildup of polish right here. Uh, 
I could brush that a little bit. I'm using uh, our Wellington uh, pig bristle brush. Uh, this has a stiffer bristle in it than our horsehair. It's great for textured leathers. Uh, all I'm doing is just using this to take some of that excess off. Otherwise, we're gonna set that aside and we're going to allow that leather to dry. Uh, okay, so it's a little bit of an experiment. Let's apply some of this neutral and just show how, again, anything that is oiled, anything that's conditioning the leather uh, will temporarily uh, darken it uh, as that leather absorbs uh, those uh, nutrients. Uh, and then as the shoe dries, you will see less and less of that. So here's the neutral. Yeah, so look at that. So there we go. This is compared to uh, the same thing with the dark brown pigment. As you can see, the dark brown is definitely darker. Uh, we've got a better concealing of these scuffs and scratches. Again, that's what the pigment is for. Uh, but you can see this neutral is still darkening this leather. Completely normal. Uh, it's not something to be alarmed of, and it's actually an indication uh, that the product is working. Uh, the solvents, the oils, uh, that is what is going to penetrate this leather to condition it. Uh, if the leather did not change uh, any color at all, uh, then that would mean that you were effectively just rubbing something on top of the leather uh, and that it's not, not even penetrating uh, the leather to uh, nourish. So again, there's always a little bit of darkening. It's not to be uh, overly concerned about that. All right, so here we are. So we're gonna take the pigmented polish now and work it in here. And again, I wanna make sure that I get these toes, uh, these scuffs and discoloration, because that was the whole point of this exercise. This has got a little bit more of a deeper scratch right here, so I just wanna really push that polish into the leather. Working this in. This replica Russian reindeer is such a unique leather. Uh, we actually have a video on the channel about uh, George Cleverly's uh, actual Russian reindeer, which, as legend has it, and at this point, you know, I'd say it's almost, uh, uh, it's probably more legend than it is uh, history. Uh, but the legend is, is that the Metacarta, which was a merchant ship, sailing to the United Kingdom uh, from Russia, sank uh, off the coast of Cornwall and what waters uh, and waters that are now controlled by the Prince of Wales um, that was carrying a bunch of uh, famous Russian reindeer leather. So this was uh, Russian reindeer leather that had been tanned uh, in, I mean, the ship sank in 1786, right? So almost as old as America. Uh, which means that the leather was tanned, you know, before that, probably sometime, you know, that same year uh, from, from a Russian reindeer that were probably at least roaming Russia uh, since uh, before America was even a country. And so, uh, again, as a legend kind of has it, some divers in the 1980s, in the light, late 80s, uh, discovered uh, the shipwreck and discovered that there was this cargo of leather uh, on the ship that was very well preserved because it was you know, basically hanging out at the bottom uh, of that uh, water and very cold water uh, off the coast of England. And um, they took it um, to some local kind of um, you know shoe repair shops that were known for making some leather accessories. And anyway, somehow, uh, it fell into the hands of actually someone from Dallas that was a, uh, a customer of uh, George Cleverly at that time. 
He uh, ends up buying a piece of this raw leather off of this guy, takes it to his shoemaker, who then takes it back uh, to the United Kingdom and shows it to George Cleverly that says, oh my goodness, this is the famous Russian reindeer. Where did you find that? And so long story short, uh, George Cleverly was able to get permission from the Prince of Wales to be able to, um, to salvage um, the uh, reindeer skins from the shipwreck. And ever since the like late 80s, early 90s, uh, has been making shoes uh, out of this famous Russian reindeer. And there's only a little bit of it left. You know, if you speak to Cleverly, there's just one or two skins left, but it's been like that for the last 15 years. Uh, every single time they are close to running out, uh, you know, they find someone to, I guess, dive down uh, to the bottom of the shipwreck and pull some more skins out. Uh, but it is true that the first pair of shoes they made uh, out of this Russian reindeer were made for the Prince of Wales. And I guess uh, as a token of his appreciation, uh, he gave Cleverly, I think, some type of special access to this, uh, to which they still enjoy this day. I actually have uh, one pair of shoes made uh, from that Russian reindeer. I felt like, you know, it was an opportunity to hone a little bit of history. But where that comes into this particular shoe is that Baker's Tannery, which is a uh, basically the UK equivalent of Horween, uh, effectively reversed engineered that tanning process. So they went back to some old books um, to uh, basically, um, you know, to reverse engineer how that tanning was done. Uh, and uh, the idea is that then they started tanning this replica Russian reindeer uh, using the same formula. Uh, and so it's a really unique leather. You can really smell kind of the birch oil in it. I mean, it's totally different uh, than anything else uh, you've ever seen. And so this is hatched uh, in a very natural way, the same way that the Russian reindeer would have been hatched, which would have been by hand. And it is, again, an oiled leather using those same oils that were traditionally used in the Russian reindeer. Okay, so here we are. We're gonna let this shoe dry a little bit. Um, this probably needs a little bit more time to dry. Uh, just because it's an oiled leather, but I'm going to go ahead and brush it. The purpose here is to just, again, take off any excess. Uh, it's not going to work up much of a shine, again, because as I said, uh, the oiled leather cream has a much lower concentration of waxes in it than the palm of ear. But the scuffing, I have to say, is largely concealed. I mean, if you'll remember, the front of this toe had significant discoloration uh, because of just how rough I'd been with these boots. And with that pigmented cream applied, I mean, it's not totally gone. Uh, the leather is still a little bit rough to the touch, right? So it's not going to correct the texture. Uh, waxes will really help do that, but it has certainly helped minimize the discoloration. Yeah, there we go. Very nice. Let me just buff this other shoe. Yep, so a few Additional scuffs right here that weren't fully concealed. So I'm gonna take this chamois back out. Take the old leather. And again, I'm just going to work it right here into that leather. So these boots were made uh, in a special collaboration with Carmina Shoemaker, of course, the famous Mallorcan uh, shoemaker known for their Goodyear welted shoes. Uh, and we were actually the first ones uh, to ever ask them to use this leather. So this is, unless they've redone it, unique to us. We actually have a few pairs of these left on the website. Uh, coincidentally, I'm gonna actually check and see if there's another pair in my size because uh, seeing how hard I've been wearing these um, you know, it was a real indication to how often I wear them. I think it's a great weekend warrior shoe um, that I might like to hold back another pair for myself. Uh, okay, so there we go. Now that uh, I've taken care of the uppers, 
this is a, a great illustration of now how out of place the edges, right, and the heel look, right? I mean, this is in pretty bad condition just given how rough I've worn these boots. So outside the scope of this video, I'm gonna take these back uh, and actually work on these a little bit. I'll post a photograph of them after, but I'll show you or tell you uh, what it is that, that I would do to these. Uh, right, so uh, this is really rough to the touch, right? Just again, concrete, rocks, who knows what. Uh, so I'm going to take uh, some sandpaper and actually sand this uh, down a little bit to smooth it. Uh, I'm not gonna take much off, but just enough to really smooth this surface and remove uh, any of the, you know, the large rough spots, uh, if you will. After that's done, then I'm gonna take uh, some dark brown pomadier cream polish, which again, has waxes, has that pigment, uh, and I'm gonna take a welt brush and I'm gonna apply it on top of these threads, right on the welt, and then I'm gonna apply it all the way around the edge, these edges of the welt and the heels. Now the pigment in the pomadier cream polish is going to recolor this, right? It's gonna provide that dark brown finish. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is take some of the dark brown mirror gloss, and I'm going to apply a nice coat on top of that, and then I'm gonna take my brush and just buff it off, right? So after that's done, uh, you know, these should look like completely new edges and heels. Uh, as I said, we're gonna drop a photograph uh, in uh, to this video for you to see uh, what that looks like. Uh, it'll probably take, you know, probably 30 minutes uh, to redo the edges and heels. And um, outside the scope of this video, we're gonna keep this focused on the Saphir uh, Oiled Leather Cream. So there we go. Saphir Oiled Leather Cream, a great product. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about how to care for your oiled leather shoes like Chrome XL, please let me know in the comments section below. Of course, all these products that we featured in this video are available exclusively online at kirbyallison.com. We don't sell on Amazon, so if you wanna support the content that we film here on this channel, make sure you go find your Saphir shoe polish online at kirbyallison.com. Uh, and of course, that uh, helps support all of these videos and customer service that we provide uh, here for uh, those passionate about their shoes. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Of course, uh, if you haven't visited kirbyallison.com, please take a moment to do so. And there you'll find the largest collection of luxury garment care and luxury shoe care accessories available in the world, uh, as well as other great clothing uh, accessories, such as this sovereign grade necktie, pocket squares, braces, socks, cigar smoking, accoutrement, dressing gowns, and really so much more. So if you haven't visited kirbyallison.com, please take a moment to do so. Uh, otherwise, I'm Kirby Allison, and I love to help the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes while exploring the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. Thanks for watching.